Hi, I'm Eric Minnick with Urban Code. One of the questions that we get a lot with Antil Pro is how do I do a multi-platform build? You know, a build where I maybe build on Windows, I build on Linux, maybe I'm building on Mac or AIX, but I want to do the build using the same source on all my machines and my build process is pretty much the same in all of them, but there are going to be some small changes. I might use different parameters or slightly different build command. And that's what I want to cover today in this uh, presentation. So what we're looking at here is a build workflow that I've created that does exactly this. So I've got some setup work up front. This is going to establish our build number um, and some other common things across our build. We also have our uh, build work, our actual build job here. This is going to be the actual list of steps we need in order to build. And you'll notice I have it times two right now. That's because I'm going to build on Windows and on Linux. And I've got some wrap up to mark this as successful and do some post build uh, cleanup. So this is actually the interesting part here. This build times two. Everything else is pretty vanilla Antel, and if you understand Antel, um, you'll get it. But with the build times two, what I've done is I've said that this job is iterated. And I said it'll happen two times because I've got two platforms to build on. If you're building on six platforms, it'll happen six times. Um, interesting uh, gotcha here. You need to make sure that the unique agents is set to no in this particular example um, due to how agent filters work. I can run these in sequence, but why? We can go ahead and run these in parallel on different hardware with no limitation on the number in parallel. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is set an iteration. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some iteration properties. So often the name of the iteration, this is going to be each job. So we're going to have build job Windows, build job Linux. Um, the name is basically just what's going to show up in the user interface. Um, you can have as many additional properties here as you want. I'm using the platform property to determine which operating system I'm going to run as. Um, and the build command property is being passed into my actual um, build scripts so that we'll say, well, I'm going to run this or I'm going to run that. So let's go ahead and kick off one of these builds so you can get a sense for this. Go ahead and press build. Seconds later, it'll be off and running. We can drill into this, and we can see that the Windows and the Linux build are running in parallel. Windows build is happening on the Windows build machine. Linux build machine, Linux builds happening on the Linux build machine, and they're running the same steps because they're running the, the same build job. I'm going to pause and, and let the checkout happen. Oh, and we're all caught up. If we look at the build command, um, we'll be able to see that the this Windows build command piece. Um, has come through. So the, the variance between the two projects is, is available to me. Um, and, and that's done just through a simple property lookup. So if we remember on the configuration we had an iteration property that was the build command. When we look at the configuration for this project we see we just look it up in our script. So we say property build command and it's substituted in on the fly. I could do the same thing with ant or make or ms build scripts as well but just for a simple shell script as an example that's how i did this um, so, so that's where these pieces end up getting used these iteration properties if i want to create more um, i just create a new one so i say hey this is a new property the default value is true i press set and this is applied up here if on Linux it's false, change the value and save. Pretty easy. So that's how I'm going to manage that. The uh, remaining big piece is how this, uh, how the uh, platform that's used is going to be uh, interpreted to get it the right machine on the or the right uh, job on the right machine. You'll see that my agent filter here is called operating system for iteration name. This is something I created and we can go ahead and look at a different tab to see what this works as. So I've come into system agent filter scripts and here's all my script is. Um, basically look up the property platform that's sitting on the iteration. 
and then I'm just going to make sure that uh, the variable on the agent, the variable named system OS name, which is discovered for us by default, matches that property. And by matches, we mean a regular expression. So if you were paying good attention, you saw that we actually, uh, Linux said the platform name was Linux, and on Windows, it was Windows.star, uh, because that'll handle Windows Vista, Windows XP, Windows Server 2000, and match all of them using this criteria. So those are the big pieces. Um, we'll tend to have a setup and a wrap up around a common build job that is distributed to a number of different platforms. The number of platforms is managed by the iterate job settings. The variances between the platforms are managed here in iteration properties and are used in the actual build steps themselves. And then the agents are managed through the agent filter. Hope that helps. Thanks.